Hello and welcome back. This is uh, episode two of the Origami Design Class video series. And uh, yeah, so if you haven't seen the first one, I encourage you to do so. Um, we'll talk about you know the overall course and uh, also some motivational factors and whatnot. But uh, today we're actually going to get started in in a design method. So uh, keep in mind that there are many different ways you can do. There's box pleating, tilted grid, twenty-two point five circle packing, hex pleating, etc wet folding. This is just one of them, and this is modifying traditional bases. Uh, and so I, I'm starting off with this one because I would say it's the most basic, and by basic, I mean it's the least background knowledge needed. So it's not. I'm not saying it's easiest because it can be kind of hard, and I'm not saying it gives the worst results because that's definitely not true either. Uh, but we're just going to start with this. And also, um, since we're doing some actual designing today rather than you know soft skills, we're going to be doing some hands-on lab work, uh, meaning we're just going to fold stuff. Let's switch to the other camera and talk about what we're doing. Here we are on the other camera, and I'm going to explain to you the, the gist of the, of the process. So traditional base, so traditional bases are uh, the fish base, bird base, frog base, and a bunch more, but these three are the ones that you're going to use a lot. So. Um, what we're going to do basically is we're going to take these bases and we'll shape them into new things. So, you know, this crane base can be shaped into many more things than just a crane. The fish base can become many more things than just a fish, frog base more than a frog, etc. There's three reasons why we're using these traditional bases. The first reason is that um, these are traditional for a, while, for a reason. Uh, there's a reason why they've lasted so long. They've uh, lasted for history and, you know, they're still around. People still use them because they're so versatile and they've proven their worth. The other reason is that um, nobody owns the, the traditional bases. So if you were to modify someone else's base, like if you were you know, to go ahead and take, um, take someone else's base and shape it into your own, uh, it could get a little bit sketchy or a little, get a little sus, a little gray area about who designed what because you're using someone else's model. But because the, no one owns the traditional bases, you can do what anyone can do whatever they want with it and it, it would count as their design. But let me show you some examples. So this was during the Inktober 2020 one of the prompts was bulky, so I made this guy. This guy was from a frog base. Um, and remember that, uh, so it was kind of, th this is the center flap. It was kind of weird, but the, uh, the point is, it's got, um, it's got like five flaps. So we'll say one, two, three, four, five. We'll count the head as a flap, which is usually a good idea because you want some head details. So it's gotta be a full, it's gotta be a full flap. And then I use the little, um, edge flaps for the ab details and stuff. And this was, you know, like a 15-minute fold or so. And it was from a frog base, right? Um, no graphs, no point splits, nice and simple, more or less. Um, another example from frog base, here's this this giraffe that I made. Um, it's, you can probably reverse engineer it, right? There's the center flap on top, you got the four corner flaps, and I actually didn't really do anything with the little f edge flaps, but uh, same idea. Let's see, um, let's look at a few more. Um, so here's the piece stuff. He's got a little branch in his mouth. This is the, this is one paper, right? You see the things attached. This is the first draft, and this was from a bird base. So you know you can see you got um, flaps for the wings, tail, and then this whole thing is uh, well. The branch is one flap, and then the little center flap became the head. So that that fit the bird base pretty well, right? You got your four corner flaps plus one edge flap, one center flap here. Uh, later, I redid this, and this was a half bird, half frog base. So, um, I don't know how intuitive that sounds, but if it's not clear, maybe we'll go back and do it later. There's a lot of mixing and matching you can do with these bases. And now, lastly, for some fish base examples. Here's the fish base, right? It's got two long flaps, two small flaps. So here's one. This is the Pixar lamp, which is um, from a 10-minute design challenge. The prompt was lamp. And so it's hard to tell, but basically these little arms here, this arm and this arm, those are just, those are these little flaps, they're small. And then this whole head and the whole, the whole, um, so here's the center, everything above that, this, this, the lamp itself is the, one of the lung flaps and the, the, the base is the other lung flap. Um, and this was, these are, these are all, all of these are 15 centimeter comedy. So they're, they're all the same paper. This one was also an Inktober one, so this is a fish base. So you know, you got the 
the tail as the one long flap, the head as another long flap, and then these two arms as the little short flaps. So this is different than Noah's ghost. Noah's ghost has this completely different structure. Now, why do we do this method? So you might have you might have heard that I mentioned that this guy was made from during the Inktober. Um, these guys were made during the 10 minute design challenge. This one was also made during Inktober. Um, and uh, during Inktober, and during the ten, if you have 10 minutes to design it, or you have one day to design, um, you don't have time to you know bust out Tree Maker and Orihime and box plate something, test load them, get an expensive piece of paper. You don't have time for all that. Uh, and this method is super quick. And again, you can get pretty high quality designs, even if the, on the first try it's kind of lame. Like uh, all of these were first tries, but um, if you redo it later, you come back to it, it can become actually pretty good, right? Now that you got the general idea, you've seen some examples of how we do this, or examples of like uh, successful designs. Uh, let's go back to the Google Slides and let's, let's see like a step-by-step -step kind of um, what is the exact process of how we do this. Um, from the nice template that I downloaded, I made this little flowchart. So the first step is you're going to, well first of all, you got to pick a subject. Or, or maybe not, maybe you're just going to free fold, but you need to figure out how many flaps your subject has. You may have heard the, of the term tree figure, which is basically like a stick figure with uh, flap lengths and whatnot. We don't really need it to be that precise. We just need to get the general idea. So for example, if we're designing a whale, we got like, you know, a flap for the head, flap for the tail, and then two smaller flaps for the fins. And that's about it. We don't need to assign numbers or anything. Maybe um, a bird. So like a bird in flight will have, you know, two wings that are pretty long, a head flap. Usually you want a head flap to be pretty long too. For details and then a tail flap and the legs are negligible so basically four flaps and stuff, stuff like that um, and so once we figure that out we're going to pick a base that matches our needs the most appropriate way so um, I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll go look through some of the traditional bases and we'll the more bases you have in your arsenal the more prepared you'll be but usually um, you don't need that many obscure bases most usually the, the traditional ones will, will serve you well and lastly, the last step, the hardest one that's going to be um, the hardest to teach and hardest to learn and hardest to explain is test folding or like shaping the base into the actual thing. Um, and so there are some tricks and tips and tricks and techniques I can show you about how to do that. But it really comes down to it. You just got to be good at shaping, which comes from um, a lot of experience with folding from other people's designs and diagrams. And you'll kind of develop it. But shaping is the artistic part, so it's hard to teach that. So... Those are the three steps, so keep these in mind, we'll, we'll come back to these and we're going to do some, um, we're going to do some practice of this. But for now, let's actually go and see some of the, the main bases we're going to be using. So let's start with the three um, like legit traditional ones, so um, in a rough order of relevance, kind of, I'm not sure. I'm going to just start with the bird base, I think that's the most common one. So um, uh, if you're watching this, I assume you know how to fold a crane. If you don't, um, you probably should learn that before designing your own. But bird base is basically like the um, the beginning of the crane. So uh, I'll just fold one real quick if you've never seen it before, or you don't remember off the top of your head what I'm talking about. Um, along the way, we've reached the preliminary base. So this is a preliminary base. Now, technically, this is a base too. There's also the water bomb base when you turn this inside out. This is also technically a base, but um, in my experience, I find that those two aren't that helpful for designing. They're just helpful for getting you to the, the real bases. So that would be, um, I'll just tell you right now, this is a bird base, fish base, and frog base. Those are the, the three that are going to you're gonna use a lot. Um, so this is the bird base. So, the bird base has it has four corner flaps that are that are pretty long. Um, there are and then there is one center flap that's kind of short. And um, yeah, so we'll we'll just remember that. So I'm doing a weird sequence. I'm just gonna reverse fold them. So you should recognize this 
this is a bird base right so you can see it's got the four flaps that are kind of long and then the one center flap on top so we'll set that aside we'll come back to this one for sure this is a so this is a handy one all right the next one um, fish base so you may or may not know the traditional fish it's a little less common but the fish base is much simpler so you're basically making two rabbit ears on each or one rabbit ear on each side again I, I should ex I expect that you probably already know this uh, so I don't need to I can just kind of speed through it but in case you don't I'm still going to fold one to show you what I'm referring to That was super rushed, but it's a fish base. So the fish base, fish base has two long flaps. It's got two long flaps, and it's got um, two short flaps. And these are all corner flaps. Um, the crease pattern looks something like this. Look at a little diamond. The crease pattern for this one looks like this. So it's kind of, uh, it looks like a star kind of, and. Um, the crease pattern should be on screen. Oh, I like this lighting. It looks pretty cool. Anyways, the last base we need to know is the frog base. So let me put those aside. Let's do the frog base. So the frog base, um, there's also the traditional frog. I should I assume you should know this one, but again, same deal. I'll just fold one anyways and, and uh, okay, let's go super speed this time. Um, how, what's the fastest way? Let's fold through the layers and just for fun. Okay, it's super sloppy, but we've made it through. I would not recommend you do what I did. I recommend you just do the regular way, slow and steady, make everything super clean. But you can still see um, what, is, what we need to see. So, crease pattern, um, something like this. And the frog base has four corner flaps that are pretty long. It's got four edge flaps that are kind of short. And then one center flap on top, which remember the center flaps will get super thick, but it's there and it's the length of a corner flap. It's like um, decently long, yeah. All right. 